Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem find k closest elements. And let me just say that this problem is actually kind of a pain. You can figure out a somewhat easy way to solve it, but then implementing that is really hard. And then there's another way that's a bit more clever and understanding that way and implementing it is very hard as well. And we're also given two parameters, k and x. So x is basically the target value that we're looking for. And k is, you know, k as in the name of the problem. We want to find the k closest elements to x in this array. Now, of course, the array is sorted. So that kind of gives you a hint that there is an efficient way to solve this problem, right? We can use the sorted property to our advantage. Now, just one more, you know, edge case that they clarify for us is that suppose we had, you know, an array like this one, two, three, let's say X is equal to two. So two is our target. And let's say K is equal to two. So we want the two closest values. Now, in this case, this would be the solution. When they say the K closest values, the target value itself does does count so we can include the target in our result now you might be thinking though one is just as close to two as three is so in this case it's ambiguous which one are we going to choose well that's what they clarify for us here if a is closer to x than b then we're going to include it but if there's a tie which one of them are we going to include we're going to include the one that's smaller right if a is smaller than b then a is going to be included if they're you know equally close so that's why this is the solution not this now when we actually return the result the, re the result also has to be sorted so it has to be you know in this order one two it can't be two one okay so let's take a look at the first example over here where k is four and the target actually k is three and the target is four that's what i marked with this little x and let's actually start with the easiest solution and then work our way to the more difficult ones. So the first thing here is we want to be able to find the target value in this array. And it might not actually exist, which we'll see in the second example. But for now, it does exist. So the way that we could get the index of the target value, one way at least, is just scan through the array. We would look at the first value. That's not the target. This is not the target. This is not the target. OK, here we find the target. Now, keep in mind that that's a big O of n time operation but let's say we do have the target now how are we going to find the k closest elements to the target well keep in mind that the array is sorted so this value is definitely going to go in our result but now what's uh, and we want k3 right so we found one of the elements that's going to go in our result but we need two more elements now of course the neighbors of uh, the target are going to be the closest values, right? Why would we go over here when we know that the array is sorted and that the neighbors are going to be the closest? I think this array can have duplicates, but that's okay because, you know, the property still holds. We should look closest first. So this is actually a pretty standard two-pointer algorithm. We're going to have a pointer here and a pointer here, and we're going to choose which one of these is closest to the target value. In this case, it's a tie, right? So then we're going to use our tiebreaker. Three is smaller than five. So then this one is uh, the closer value. So then we're going to take uh, this pointer and now shift it over here. And then this is still here. So basically, uh, this is our result so far. We just need one more value because we want k equals three. So now which one of these two is closer? Well, we're going to take the difference of the absolute value. But we actually don't even need the absolute value in this case because, like I said, the array is sorted. So we know that... Uh, any value to the right is going to be greater than or equal to the target. Any value to the left is going to be less than or equal to the target. So we can just take 4 minus 2. Uh, that's going to be 2. Or we can take uh, 5 minus 4, which is going to be 1. So, of course, this one is closer. So then we have basically found our result, right? These three values are what we're going to return. Okay, I just realized that I reversed the, uh, these two parameters, a k and x. But that's okay because, you know, just, just assume we had a slightly different example. We still implemented the solution correctly. Okay, so the problem with the linear scan solution that I just showed is that the overall time complexity is big O of n. And since this array is sorted, shouldn't we be able to use binary search to maybe make the time complexity be a little better and actually be log n? And that is actually possible. So in the previous example, we would have run binary search to find the target value, which in the previous example was four. And then we would, you know, once we've done that, then we would do our regular two pointer algorithm. And actually, I think the time complexity is going to be log n uh, plus k because we do need to go through at least k elements uh, to build our result. So that's going to be the overall time complexity. 
Uh, but there's a catch. What if the target actually doesn't exist in our result, which is possible with this example? So in this case, k equals four, we want a window of four elements, but the target value is negative one. So we want the four closest elements to negative one, but negative one doesn't actually exist in this array. Well, we would make a modification to our binary search. Instead of finding the target value, if the target value doesn't exist, find the closest value to the target value, and then we'll still be able to run our algorithm that I showed, the two-pointer algorithm, the exact same, except we'll be using the closest value rather than the target value. So in this case, if we ran our binary search, what would be the closest value to negative one? Well, negative one is too small. It goes out of bounds. So clearly the small, uh, the the closest value is going to be over here. Now, of course, what would happen if uh, x, the target value, was too big? What if it was actually 6, which is bigger than our largest value? In that case, the closest value is going to be over here. Now, an even more interesting example would be something, suppose this wasn't a 5, let's say this was actually an 8, and let's say our target was actually 6. Well, in this case, what's gonna be the closest value? Is it gonna be four? Is it gonna be eight? Well, both of these are actually a difference of two away from the target value. So which one is the closest one? Well, again, we'd have to use our tiebreaker. So the smaller one is going to win. So in this case, four would be the closest value. And then we would use our two pointer uh, approach to build that window again. So it is possible with binary search. And this solution that I just talked about is by far more intuitive, at least in my opinion, though it's kind of a pain to implement. I will have the code for this solution that I just talked about in the description if you want to take a look. But there's a slightly better solution. I don't even know if you could call it better. I think it's technically a tiny bit more efficient because the time complexity is actually log of n minus k plus k because you still have to build the result. So I wouldn't even say it's you know actually more efficient. But writing the code for this one is a lot easier, but actually understanding this solution is very complicated. I'll try to make it as simple and as concise as I can, but if anybody in the comments has a better way of understanding it, feel free to let me know because this is definitely a challenging one. So the first thing about this solution is that we're not gonna be searching for the target value we're actually just going to be searching for the window itself. So suppose we had parameters like this, x equals five, that's the target value, let's say k equals two, that's the size of the window. We would uh, not just search for the target value, we would search for the window itself. So, you know, suppose the first thing we try is this window. And, you know, based on some comparison, we say, okay, maybe there's a better window. And then we'd try, uh, you know, searching t in another direction. Or maybe based on the opposite condition, we would search in the opposite direction. The edge cases are really what's going to make this difficult. Now, in this case, we know k equals two, and we're looking for a window. So just to make things easy for us, let's just use the left value as like our search value in this binary search that we're gonna do. So technically, you know, if we're gonna be using a pointer, you know, mid is going to be the left boundary of like this window. We can't technically search the entire array because what if our mid was here, then we'd want a window of size two, but that goes out of bounds. So what we're really gonna do is create a binary search from the beginning, we'll call that left, and from this position, minus two, because two is our K pointer. So our right pointer is gonna be here. So, you know, uh, we could have a window like like this, a window like this, this, or this. We can't put one over here. So now before we actually look at a real example, let's just look at like an abstract idea of it. Now let's say we had a really big window like this one. In this case, it's obvious that we could have a better window if we shifted this one to the left. But the important question is, how could we determine that? And in the opposite case, if we had a window like this, it's also very obvious that we could have a better one if we shifted it to the right. Because remember, our goal is for this window to compromise the k closest elements to this target value. So at the very least, we should include the target value itself or you know the, the values that are close to it. Now, just for visual representation, assume we had one that was kind of like this. Now, we don't know what the values actually are. Maybe this could be the closest window itself, but you know, suppose that it's not. Suppose that these values are actually really big and there's some better values over here. In that case, we would want to shift this window to the left. And in the opposite case, if we had something like this, maybe we would want to shift it to the right. Now, this is where things are going to get a little abstract, but I still think this is the best way to understand this problem 
because like I said, it gets very complicated. Let's make things simple. The question is, is this the best possible window we could have? Well, let's confirm it. Let's take the win the value just outside of the window, the, the value that's to the right of it, and let's ask ourselves, if we possibly shifted this window by one so that it would possibly be something like this, where we include the rightmost value and then chop off the leftmost value, would this new window be better than the previous window? Well, how do we confirm confirm that. Remember, we want the k closest values to x. Let's just ask ourselves, is this value over here closer than this value that's currently a part of the window? If this value is closer, then we know for sure that the blue window is better than the purple window. And that basically also tells us that we don't ever need to consider any of these values because we know that there's never going to be a better window over there. But if that's not the case, meaning that this value is not closer than this value, we don't know that the opposite is true. In that case, we know that we've basically eliminated all of this part. Now, we might still have to search to the left, but we have eliminated all of this portion. And remember, when we're actually talking about a window itself, the leftmost value of the window is going to be our midpoint that we calculate using this binary search using these left and right boundaries. So if we were to update the window, right, if we were to say, okay, this new window is better, then we would say our left pointer is going to be M plus one. It's going to be, you know, it's going to chop everything over here off and we're only going to search to the right. But if the other case was true, where we're, you know, removing everything from over here, in that case, we're going to set our right pointer to be M. We're not going to set it to be M minus one. We're just going to set it to be M. And the reason we're just going to be setting it to M and not M minus one is because if we set it to M minus one, then we would be eliminating this part uh, as well. And technically, when we do set r equal to m, we're eliminating this uh, as well, everything uh, to the right of m. Uh, but I'm not showing that because, you know, we just because we're eliminating this doesn't mean this purple uh, window is invalid. I know it kind of makes it confusing because uh, m is going to be the left boundary of our window, uh, but the we already have a couple variables left and right, uh, which are going to be kind of keeping track of like the entire search range itself. I know that's kind of confusing, but that's just kind of the nature of this problem. So just to give you like a quick run through of the algorithm. So this is how we're going to initialize our left and right pointers. We're going to calculate the mid uh, point between them. I think that's going to be two. So this is where our mid is going to be. So this is technically what our window would look like two and three. Of course, our target is five. So we're going to ask ourselves, uh, is this value closer than the value right outside, right? Is this closer or is this closer? Now, how we do that calculation itself is also a bit complicated. The value to the right outside is going to be uh, computed uh, with that value minus the target value. So in this case, four minus X. Now that's gonna end up actually being negative. But you know, suppose that the target value is actually somewhere in the middle meaning that if the target was actually smaller than that right value, it would have been positive. But you'll see that the math actually works out uh, in terms of like the way the comparisons are gonna work either way. Because in this case, okay, we have four minus X, that's negative one. And with the left value, we're gonna actually say uh, X minus two in that case, which in this case is gonna be five minus a two, which is gonna be positive three. So in this case, since the difference here is smaller than the difference here, that means that this value is closer to five than two is. So in this case, we are gonna shift our window to the right. And the way we're gonna do that is taking our left pointer and setting it to be M plus one. So our left pointer is gonna be over here. Our right pointer is still gonna be over here. So once again, I would calculate the midway point. I think that would mean the, the mid would be over here at three. So this would be our window. Once again, we're gonna ask which one of these is closer, five or three. So in this case, we're gonna check, well, this is our window and we're gonna check, is this value closer than this value? Uh, we can do that by taking five minus X. Uh, X is five in this case as well. So we have zero or uh, taking uh, three uh, and then doing X minus three. That's going to be positive two. So this is smaller. That means this one's closer. So again, we would shift our left pointer uh, to be M plus one. So in this case, left and right are going to be over here. So this is our window. And since, of course, you know, the pointers have reached each other. So that means this is our only possibility. So this is going to be our solution four and five.
So this is the solution that I'm gonna code up right now, but if you don't find this one intuitive, I will have the other code as well in the description if you wanna take a look. So now let's code it up, and like I said, we're gonna initialize our left and right pointers. Well, the left is gonna be at zero, and the right pointer is going to be the length of the array minus k because we are searching not just for a value but we're searching for a window we're going to be you know doing this binary search while our pointers have not met each other and that midpoint that we compute is uh you know as normal binary search goes is just going to be the midway point between our two pointers uh, but that m actually represents the leftmost value of our window and so the way we're calculating uh, this the difference is going to be x minus the value in the middle because and the way we do it like this is because we're assuming that x is going to be greater than the value at the middle it might not necessarily be the case but that's kind of how the computation ends up working out i could have gone through uh, some some more examples to explain that but i think that's something you should probably do on your own because i think it'll probably make more sense uh, if you do it that way uh, and the opposite case remember we want to look at the value just outside of the window we can do that by taking m plus k and from that value we're going to subtract x which is the target value you're probably wondering again why in this case are we doing x minus the value and in this case doing the value minus x it's just, you know, that's just how the math works out. And that's just the easiest way to do this. If we had, you know, several more conditions, I think if we'd have four conditionals, we could have, you know, made it, I guess, probably a bit more readable. But this is like the elegant way that people in the discuss section have figured out how to do so. Uh, this basically means that the value to the right of our window is closer. So that means we want to shift our window to the right. We can do that by taking our left pointer, setting it to be middle plus one. In the else case, we don't necessarily know that values to the left of this are closer. We just know that this value is either uh, clo closer to the target or it's equally close to the target, which is still okay because remember we're biased towards smaller values and you know this is going to be smaller than this value because of the sorted property of the array. So in the else case, all we really know is that we're not going to go any further to the right uh, than where our mid is currently at. So we're gonna say R is equal to mid, not to mid minus one. Uh, that you can kind of understand from the drawing that I was showing. And I would recommend, you know, kind of going through the logical cases yourself. If you don't understand this, this is a very complicated problem. It's not, it's definitely not your fault. And that's why I will have the other uh, slightly easier solution in the description as well. But once that is done, our left and right pointers will have met each other. So in that case, we can just return the window from a starting at the left pointer, wherever it happens to be, going up until L plus K. This is non-inclusive, so it won't include the last value, but the, uh, when the subarray will be of size K, which is what we want. So that's what we can return. Let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does, and it's pretty efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.